and welcome back to Voyage of a Time Wanderer, and welcome to my first month-long reading vlog for Jane Austen July. So in the past I have really enjoyed watching Katie from Books and Things who does Jane Austen July vlogs and Victober vlogs and Kate Howe does Victober vlogs and a number of other people that I've seen on booktube do reading vlogs for these month-long readathons. So I thought that would be a fun way to uh, document my reading through Jane Austen July as well as share my thoughts and kind of wrap up my books as I read rather than in one long wrap-up video. So without further ado, hope you enjoy watching my Jane Austen July reading. So I have just finished reading Sandington and I am mourning a fresh Jane Austen's death because it is devastating that she died before she was able to complete this book or that she put it aside and wasn't able to finish writing it because I am so intrigued by the cast of characters she's introduced to us so far. Um, more than any of her other books I would say this has like a very diverse and numerous cast. Right from the start we're introduced to lots of different people and kind of a la Lady Susan. Uh, there is kind of a snarkier vibe to some of these characters. We know right off the bat that some of them don't have the best motives. We're not having to find that out through the plot like we do in Pride and Prejudice but she introduces us to them and we know right away that they are not necessarily the best people. So I would have been so curious to know what her plan was uh, and how she was going to carry on and wrap up this plot. So I'm definitely looking forward now to seeing what the mini series did with these characters and then I may have to track down some of those um, novels that try to complete her unfinished work and see where they ended up taking the storyline. So I've just been doing a little bit of garden maintenance. I did a little bit of weeding and uh, deadheading. Uh, planted some fresh herbs to replace the ones that died off during the heat wave. And 
and now I'm going to enjoy reading on my balcony. I've got a nice glass of homemade peach iced tea with some lemon balm and mint leaves uh, fresh from the garden here. And I'm about to start Northanger Abbey. Yay! I'm very much in the mood for Northanger Abbey. I just love the romance in this book and I can't wait to dive back into Regency Bath. So I just finished watching Sandington, the miniseries, and I really, really enjoyed it. It's definitely, I think, taking some more modern liberties with where Austen probably would have taken the plot, so I will still remain curious where she was planning to take the characters, but it was certainly entertaining television. I particularly loved Esther's storyline, and Young Stringer is one of my favorite characters. I know a lot of people had warned me that it ends on a cliffhanger and that it hadn't been uh, renewed for a second season, but I saw that it had just been picked up by, I think, Amazon Prime uh, for uh, seasons two and three. So I'm very curious now to see where they're going to take the plot, especially because it's said that um, the actor who played Sidney Parker won't be coming back. So we'll see where they end up taking Charlotte and her story throughout uh, seasons two and three. I will say, like, obviously there were some nitpicky things. The fact that she had her hair down all the time despite all the other characters being properly bonneted, the fact that she was wearing short-sleeved uh, evening gowns in the middle of the day um, definitely irritated me a little bit but it was enjoyable enough and I really enjoyed the seaside setting that it was still something that I could see myself watching again in the future and carrying on with. I feel like the dynamic between Charlotte and Sydney, they tried a bit too hard to make it Pride and Prejudice-esque, um, when I feel like Austen is usually pretty good at creating unique story arcs for each book. So I don't think that that is necessarily where Austen would have gone if she had carried on with the plot, but I think they were just trying to fulfill some of like the common Austen tropes uh, in the way that they cast and directed it. But overall, highly enjoyable. I'm so glad that I have finally watched it and read the chapters that Austen had managed to write before her passing. I'm particularly intrigued by the inclusion of the Caribbean heiress and I hope that that's continued to be explored in seasons two and three. I feel like that is something that uh, Austen was just starting to touch on with Mansfield Park, definitely had uh, elements of that with it being clear that uh, the family's Fortune was based off of a plantation in the Caribbean and then seen her bring a black character into Sandington who kind of flipped maybe stereotypes from the time on the head by being a very wealthy heiress. I just wish we could have seen where Austin would have uh, planned to take that character because I find the beginnings of Austin writing about uh, anti-slavery and uh, kind of an anti-colonialist perspective both in Mansfield Park and then in Sandington. Uh, very, very interesting, especially for the time period, so something to ponder. So it's our wedding anniversary today and I thought that this movie might be the perfect mix of our tastes. Pride and Prejudice for me, Zombies for him, and we have uh, Dairy Queen Blizzard as our little post date night dessert and we're gonna see what Pride and Prejudice and Zombies is like.
Mrs. Luff's grandmother clearly remembered was their description of Jane Austen in the act of running across the field to call on her friends. I like to think that this last, insubstantial image of Jane running through the Hampshire grass in fact shows her running away from all the eager, hungry biographers keen to get their teeth into her. But let her run away from us. Let our final image of Jane be one of speed and power, not lying immovable upon her unfamiliar bed in the cramped, rented upper room in Winchester, but instead running, running across the field to see her friends once again. So I just finished listening to Jane Austen at Home by Lucy Worsley on my lunch break, and I am utterly enchanted with that book. The first time I have read... Uh, like a full novel like biography of Jane and it has put her and her novels and the themes she wrote about in a whole new light for me learning more about her life about some of the little uh, tidbits of reality that she wove into her stories uh, I will definitely never be reading one of her books again without thinking about some of the topics and elements brought up by Lucy Worsley I had watched some of her TV shows and TV miniseries and stuff before, but never read one of her books. And I'm definitely going to be checking out more of her nonfiction now because she has such an approachable way of writing nonfiction. And she just really brought Jane to life in such a beautiful way. It is an absolutely stunning book. If you haven't had a chance to read it yet, I highly recommend it. And it's made me want to go watch her miniseries again about Jane's homes and look up more pictures and do more virtual tours of Jane's homes. I've got a few other books on the go right now, but I am planning to pick up the Jane Austen Society still this Jane Austen July, and I'm even more excited now that I have a deeper emotional connection to Chawton to read more about uh, the society that was formed to save that house as a museum. So that's my opinion on Lucy Worsley's uh, Jane Austen at Home. It's just a beautiful tribute to Jane and has definitely been a highlight of my Jane Austen July so far. So I'm out here on my balcony and I have just finished reading The Other Bennett Sister by Janice Hadlow and I enjoyed this book so much. I haven't actually read very many classics retellings. The only other one that I can really think of is Longbourn, which is also a Pride and Prejudice retelling, but it's very much focused on uh, the servant's storyline. So even though it kind of follows the same timeline as the events of Pride and Prejudice, the plot is very divergent because it's following a whole different set of characters and the main cast of Pride and Prejudice is kind of just pops in and out uh, throughout the book. But this book is about Mary Bennett, so obviously uh, the events and characters of Pride and Prejudice as we know it are much more at the forefront of this book, especially in the first two parts, uh, part one and two. Um, part one really follows uh, just before and during the events of Pride and Prejudice. Part two is just after and then part three and four are kind of diverging more into Mary being the hero of the story. As someone who has always had a bit of a soft spot for Mary Bennett, I just really enjoyed this book. It definitely felt true to uh, Austen's writing style and Austen's characters and it feels like a believable uh, continuation of what might have happened to Mary after Pride and Prejudice. So. I am thrilled to have read this and it's definitely making me curious to check out more retellings because it's a genre that I wasn't sure if I would like but after enjoying the other Bennett sister so much I think I might just like retellings more than I thought I would. I'm not even sure I can answer that, she replied, as he pointed the way back down the country lane, opposite the end where his wagon sat with his load temporarily forgotten. I just feel when I read her, when I reread her, which I do more than any other author, it's as if she is inside my head like music. My father first read books to me when I was very young. He died when I was 12. I hear his voice too when I read her. Nothing made him laugh out loud in the faint the way those books did. He listened to her rambling on and shook his head as if in disbelief. You have a better then? The woman asked. A disbelieving light in her own eyes meeting his. Can't say I have too much interest. Stick to Haggard and the like. Adventure stories, you know? Suppose you might judge me for that. I would never judge anyone for what they read. She caught the ironic look on his face and added with another broad smile. Although I guess I just did. All the same.
So that has been my month of reading for Jane Austen July. It is currently Saturday, July 31st, and we only have a few hours left in Jane Austen July, and I'm still in the middle of a few reads. I know I have my thoughts kind of sprinkled throughout the video, but to recap, I read Sandington by Jane Austen. I read The Other Bennett Sister by Janice Hadlow, and I read or rather listened to Jane Austen at Home by Lucy Worsley. I also watched the whole first season of the Sandington miniseries and am now on board with everyone who is impatiently waiting for the recently renewed season two and season three. And I also watched Pride and Prejudice and Zombies and was quite surprised how much I actually enjoyed that. Then for the books that I still have on the go, I'm still working my way through Northanger Abbey. I'm hoping to be finished this one by the end of the day, I don't really have anything else planned for the day, so I'm going to be working on reading Northanger Abbey. I also just started listening uh, yesterday to the Jane Austen Society by Natalie Jenner. Someone told me that Richard Armitage is the narrator uh, for the audiobook, so I have quickly switched from reading it physically to listening to it, and I'm very much enjoying that so far. And then I'm still working my way through uh, William Wordsworth's lyrical ballads. I've read a poem every day or so, and it actually tied in perfectly with the other Bennett sisters, so I'm really glad that I chose that poetry collection, but if I read too many poems at once, they kind of all blend together and I don't really enjoy them, so I prefer spacing them out, and I'll probably be finished that collection by the end of the summer. So of course I didn't end up reading everything off of my rather ambitious TBR, but I still had a lovely time this Jane Austen July, and I'm very happy with the books that I have read. A lot of them were ones that I had had kind of on my radar for a long time as ones that I wanted to read, so I'm so glad to have finally crossed some of them off, especially Jane Austen at Home. That was probably my standout read for this month, and I can't wait to read more of Lucy Worsley's uh, nonfiction works. So I already can't wait until next year, and I hope if you participated in Jane Austen July, you also found some new favorite uh, Jane-related books. And until next time, enjoy wandering through the pages of a good book.